السلام عليكم I couldn't help but notice that the overwhelming majority of the reminders on the internet are talking about how you should love Allah and how important is it that you make your love for Allah over the love for everything else and everyone else but very rarely do you find someone who is talking about the opposite someone talking about how Allah loves you more than you can imagine That's why I decided to record this quick reminder to discuss this specific topic. I will divide this reminder into three parts. The general love that Allah grants everyone. The special love that Allah grants specific people. And finally, signs that Allah loves you, this special love. So bring your coffee and let's start. Imagine a very poor village in the middle of Africa, for example. And imagine a very wealthy businessman who has been providing shelter, medicine, clothes, water and food for the whole village for 20 years, non-stop, every day. If I tell you that everyone in this village loves the businessman, you will say, okay, that's predictable. But if I tell you that the businessman loves them more than they love him, you will be surprised. Why would he love them? Allah said in Quran chapter 5 verse 54 فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ Allah will bring forth people, he will love them and they will love him. Ibn al-Qayyim commented on this verse saying لَيْسَ الْعَجَبْ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ يُحِبُّونَهُ إِنَّمَا الْعَجَبْ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ يُحِبُّهُمْ The amazement is not in the words they will love him. That's normal. The needy always loves the giver. The amazement is in the word he will love them. This part was not predictable. Allah is the one who made all the angels prostrate to Adam. Allah is the one who prepared paradise for us. Allah is the one who made one good deed register as 10, sometimes up to 700. And that applies to all good deeds except fasting. He said the reward is a surprise. كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به. All the deeds of the son of Adam are for him except fasting. It is for me and I will reward it. Allah is the one who made one sin register as one. And if you follow it with a good deed, it gets automatically deleted. Allah is the one who promised to grow our charity for us. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, whoever gives a small charity, like the equivalent of one date, Allah will grow it for him the same way you grow your baby horses until they become expensive race horses. Allah will grow it for him until it becomes as big as a mountain. Now ask yourself, why is he doing all that for us? How great his love for us to treat us with this mercy. When God wanted us to imagine his love for us, he gave the impressive example of the relationship between a mother and her baby. First, when she's pregnant, the child is just that thing that causes her more and more pain. She eats her food and he is taking from her own food while he's inside of her. He is sleeping while she is awake in pain. During delivery, she endures huge pain and bleeding. And when she finally sees him, you're expecting her to punish him in the face and tell him, you are the reason I was throwing up every day for the past nine months. But no, she hugs him and she shows him unimaginable love. She protects him with her life and offers him unconditional love. And this love stays forever, without asking him for anything in return. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was sitting with his friends, and they saw a mother hugging her baby with love. He asked them, أَتَرَوْنَ هَذِهِ طَارِحَةً وَلَدَهَا فِي النَّارِ Do you think this mother would throw her baby in hellfire? They said, of course not, she loves him. Then he said, الله أرحم بكم من المرأة بولدها Allah is more merciful to his slaves than a mother to her baby علي بن أبي طالب then said لو قيل لي يوم القيامة سنجعل حسابك لأبيك وأمك لرفض لأن الله أرحم بي من أبي وأمي On the day of judgment If I was given a choice between being judged by Allah or being judged by my father and mother I will choose Allah because Allah is more merciful to me than my own parents. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Allah divided mercy into 100 parts. He sent to earth one of them, 
to be divided between all of his creation. Every animal that pulled her feet away from its baby, so as not to be hurt by it, it is from this one mercy. Every human who loved his children, every one who felt compassion, every one who felt love, every jinn, every angel, every animal, every insect, in all the history of the universe, all of that is one part of mercy. The remaining 99 parts are reserved for forgiving our sins and letting us into paradise, even though we don't deserve it. Read this with me. Inni wal insu wal jinnu fi naba'in azim. Akhluqu wa yu'badu ghayri. Arzuqu wa yushkaru siway. What is happening between me and the humans and the jinn is a great deal. I create and they worship someone else. I provide and they thank someone else. خيري إلى العباد نازل وشرهم إلي صاعد أتودد إليهم بالنعم وأنا الغني عنهم ويتبغضون إلي بالمعاصي وهم أفقر ما يكون إلي I send good down to them and they respond back to me with evil I act in a friendly way to them with my bounties and I don't need them and they respond to me with enmity and they need me the most أهل ذكري أهل مجالستي من أراد أن يجالسني فليذكرني أهل طاعتي أهل محبتي The people who meet me are the people who do ذكر Whoever wants to meet me, tell them to remember me The people who obey me are the people I love أهل معصيتي لا أقنتهم من رحمتي إن تابوا إلي فأنا حبيبهم وإن أبوا فأنا طبيبهم أبتليهم بالمصائب لأطهرهم من المعايب the people who sin, I don't deprive them of my mercy. If they repent, I love them. And if they don't, I am their doctor. I cleanse them from their sins with hardship. من أتاني منهم تائبا تلقيته من بعيد ومن أعرض عني ناديته من قريب. أقول له أين تذهب؟ ألك رب سواي. Whoever comes back to me, I welcome him from far away. And whoever goes away, I call him from near. Where are you going? Do you have any lord other than me? الحسنة عندي بعشرة أمثالها وأزيد والسيئة عندي بمثلها وأعفو وعزتي وجلالي لو استغفروني منها لغفرتها لهم I record one good deed as ten or more and I record every sin as one and I forgive I swear by my might if they ask for forgiveness I will forgive them this is from the tales of the children of Israel, but its meaning is correct. Let's also read this Qudsi hadith. من ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي ومن ذكرني في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منه Whoever mentions me by himself, I will also mention him. And whoever mentions me in front of a group, I will mention him in front of a better group. ومن تقرب إلي شبرا تقربت إليه ذراعا ومن تقرب إلي ذراعا تقربت إليه باعا ومن أتاني يمشي أتيته هرولة Whoever comes to me one step as small as one inch I will come to him closer a bigger step as long as one arm's length Whoever comes closer to me one step as small as one arm's length I will come closer to him a bigger step as long as open arms And whoever comes to me walking I will come closer to him running See how much he loves us. When the shaitan said to Allah, وعزتك يا رب لا أبرح أغوي عبادك ما دامت أرواحهم في أجسادهم I swear by your honor, I will not stop deluding them as long as their souls are in their bodies. Allah responded to him saying, وعزتي وجلالي لا أزال أغفر لهم ما استغفروني I swear by my honor, I will not stop forgiving them as long as they ask for it. Every night Allah keeps calling us هل من سائل فأعطيه هل من داع فأستجيب له Does anyone need anything? Ask me, I will grant it Does anyone want to make dua? Ask, I will accept it هل من تائب فأتوب عليه هل من مستغفر فأغفر له Does anyone want to repent? Ask, I will accept it Does anyone need forgiveness for a sin? Ask, I will forgive it See how much he loves us if you want to hear more amazing things that show how much Allah loves all of us, watch our video 38 Ways Allah Will Forgive You. I will leave a link to it in the description below.
but now I need to focus less on God's general love for humanity and focus more on God's special love for his close servants, his awliya. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, إن الله إذا أحب عبدا دعا جبريل فقال إني أحب فلانا فأحبه قال فيحبه جبريل ثم ينادي في السماء فيقول إن الله يحب فلانا فأحبه فيحبه أهل السماء قال ثم يوضع له القبول في الأرض When Allah loves someone, he calls Jibreel and says I love this person, so love him So Jibreel also loves him Then Jibreel calls all the inhabitants of heaven that Allah loves this person, so you should love him too. So the inhabitants of heaven love him too. Then he is granted acceptance on earth. So many people feel love towards someone, but they are shy to declare this love. But the Prophet declared his love for his wife, Aisha, publicly in front of everyone. And Allah also does for everyone he loves. وإذا أبغض عبدا دعا جبريل فيقول إني أبغض فلانا فأبغضه قال فيبغضه جبريل ثم ينادي في أهل السماء إن الله يبغض فلانا فأبغضوه قال فيبغضوه ثم توضع له البغضاء في الأرض When Allah hates someone he calls Jibreel and says I hate this person so hate him so Jibreel also hates him Then Jibreel calls in heavens that Allah hates this person, so hate him. So all the inhabitants of heaven also hate him. Then he is granted repulsion on earth. Allah said in Al-Hadith Al-Qudusi, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتَهُ بِالْحَرْبِ وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ Whoever shows enmity to one of my close servants, my awliya, I declare war on him. And there is no better way for my servant to come closer to me than what I obligated him to do. وما يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها وإن سألني لأعطينه وإن استعاذني لأعيذنه. But my servant keeps trying to get even closer to me by doing sunnah. He keeps trying and trying until I love him. But when I love him, I become his eyes that he sees with, his ears that he hears with, his hands, his legs. Whenever he asks me for help, I help him. Whenever he asks me for protection, I protect him. This is the special love I am referring to. But some might ask, isn't that special love only for the awliya? Aren't those people different than us? Actually, that is a misconception that needs to be clarified. Instead of me clarifying it myself, let's just read Quran chapter 10 verse 68 to know who are the awliya. أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Awliya Allah, the close servants of Allah, Surely have nothing to fear, and they do not grieve. Who are those people? الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون. Those who believed and are mindful of Allah. That's it. Those are the awliya. Nothing special. Let's look at some examples. Allah loved our mother Khadija. On her deathbed, Allah sent Jibreel to the Prophet and told him. اقرأ عليها السلام من ربها ومني وبشرها ببيت في الجنة من قصب تل خديجة ذات الله himself says salam to her and I say salam to her too and tell her that there is a house in paradise waiting for her and tell her that in this house in paradise there will be no more hardship some might ask why brother She is literally dying right now. Instead of sending Jibreel to give her the good news, she will find out anyway after like one minute. Actually, that is what is amazing about this story. Not only she will have zero fear of the moment of death, but also Allah declared his love to her, to all humanity, including me and you watching this video. Another example. Ubay ibn Ka'b, he was a Jew who accepted Islam. When Surah al bayyinah was revealed, It was talking about the people of the book, which might be a sensitive matter for him as an ex-Jew. Look how Allah showed love to him. 
The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, called him and said, Inna Allah amarani an a'rid al-Qur'an alayk. Allah ordered me to read this Qur'an on you. Then he found Ubay crying. The Prophet said, Why are you crying? He said, Wasammani laka rabbi. Did Allah mention me by name, me? The Prophet said, Yes, he mentioned you by name. And Ubay kept crying. Another example. Abdullah ibn Hiram. He was arguing with his only son before the battle of Uhud. Do you know why they were arguing? Because he had nine daughters, so both of them cannot go to the battle. Only one can go to battle, so the other one would take care of the nine girls. Abdullah ibn Hiram told his son, Wallahi, law kanat ghayr al-jannah la'atartuka biha. I swear to Allah, if it was anything else other than jannah, I would leave it for you. But it is jannah, I can't. So the son stayed and Abdullah went to the battle. He was the first to die as shaheed in the battle. The disbelievers tore his body apart. After the battle was over, his son was crying, trying to see his father's body, but the friends of the Prophet were pushing him away, preventing him from seeing the body because the body was humiliated. Then the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, told him, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يُكَلِّمْ أَحَدًا مِنْ خَلْقِهِ قَطْ إِلَّا مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَحْيَا أَبَاكِ فَكَلَّمَهُ كِفَاحًا Allah never talked to anyone except from behind the barrier, except your father. He talked to him directly without a barrier and said, يَا عَبْدِي تَمَنَّ عَلَيَّ مَا شِئْتَ أَعْطِيكِ My slave, ask whatever you want and I will grant it for you. Then your father told him, تردني إلى الدنيا فأقتل فيك. My wish is to be sent back to dunya so I can fight for your sake again and to be killed for your sake again. Then Allah said, لا إني أقسمت بيمين أنهم إليها لا يرجعون. No, I swore that no one is allowed to go back to dunya. Ask something else. May Allah grant all of us love like his love for Abdullah ibn Hiram. The friends of the Prophet were so eager to get this love from Allah. It was their life goal. They were competing with each other to please Allah more and more to gain his love. Until one day during the battle of Al-Khandaq, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, لَأُعْطِيَنَّ الرَّايَةَ غَدًا رَجُلًا يُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَيَفْتَحُ اللَّهُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ I will give army leadership tomorrow to a man who loves Allah and his messenger. And Allah and his messenger also love him. When he said that, almost everyone went crazy over these words. Everyone wished it was him. Everyone wanted to be the one that Allah loves. The next day, the Prophet said, I will give the leadership to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Where is Ali? They said, no, it cannot be Ali. He has diseases in his eyes. He can't see. Pick me, pick me. You know, everyone wants to be the one that Allah loves. But instead, he went to Ali and he made the famous miracle when he cured his eyes instantly and gave him the leadership and they won the war. Anyway, Allah also shows his love for someone by granting him amazing last deeds or last words before he dies. I already talked about that in my previous video, Your Last Deed. I will leave a link to it in the description. Now, let's answer the most important questions. Are there signs that Allah loves me? And the answer is yes. There are 10 signs that show that Allah has special love for you. We can drive them together from Quran and Hadith. Number one, if good deeds are becoming easy for you to do, that is a sign that Allah loves you. Because the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Inna Allah ta'ala yu'ti al-mala man ahab وَمَنْ لَا يُحِبْ وَلَا يُعْطِي الْإِيمَانَ إِلَّا مَنْ يُحِبْ Allah Almighty bestows wealth on those he loves and those he does not love. But he only bestows faith upon those whom he loves. Number two. And it is exactly the opposite of number one. If sins are becoming hard for you to do, that is a sign that Allah loves you. Sometimes you find a man saying, all my colleagues in business are cheating and taking bribes but whenever I try to do so, I get caught. Don't be stupid. 
this is a sign that Allah loves you. Sometimes you find a boy in school saying, all my friends can talk to girls, but whenever I try to do so, I get shy and awkward. That is a sign that Allah loves you. Be proud of it and stop trying to sin. Sometimes you find a girl complaining that her father is not letting her go party with her friends. Again, that is a sign that Allah loves you. Be proud of it and stop trying to sin. Number three. Allah gave a very clear description of the people he loves in Quran chapter 5 verse 54. فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ أَذِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَعِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْ مَتَلَائِمٍ Allah will bring forth people who will love him and will be loved by him. They will be humble with the believers and firm towards the disbelievers. Struggling in the way of Allah, fearing no blame from anyone. If you fear no blame from people and are publicly proud of being a Muslim, not caring what the disbelievers think of you, while being so humble towards the believers, Allah definitely loves you. Number four. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ O Prophet, say, if you love Allah, follow me and Allah will love you back. If you take the Prophet as a role model in your life, then Allah definitely loves you. Number five. وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبُّهُ My servant keeps trying to get closer to me by doing sunnah until I love him. If you do a lot of sunnah every day, then Allah definitely loves you. Number six. Allah said, وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِيهِ وَالْمُتَجَالِسِينَ فِيهِ my love is for sure for those who love each other without ulterior motives. Look at your relationship with your neighbors, with your friends. Are you the kind of person who is nice to someone because he might help you with something? Or nice to someone because he might advance your career in a way? Or nice to someone because he helps you in school? Then you're not that person that Allah is referring to. Allah loves those who love people without hidden agendas and reasons who get together, visit each other, and love each other without any expected benefit. If you are one of them, then Allah definitely loves you. Number seven. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'a. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah will love to meet him. Are you waiting patiently for the day that you will meet Allah, or are you afraid of that day? Based on your answer, you will know whether Allah loves you or not. Number 8. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ أَهْلَ بَيْتٍ أَدْخَلَ عَلَيْهِمُ الرِّفْقِ Indeed, when Allah loves people, He grants them kindness towards others. If you have kindness in your heart towards everyone, then Allah definitely loves you. Number 9. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا ابْتَلَاهُمْ Indeed, when Allah loves someone, He tests him more. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, also said, أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ بَلَاءً الْأَنْبِيَاءِ ثُمَّ الْأَمْثَلْ فَالْأَمْثَلْ يُبْتَلَ النَّاسُ عَلَى قَدْرِ دِينِهِمْ The most people that get tested by Allah are the Prophets. Then the lower in degree, then the lower in degree. Everyone gets tests as strong as their faith. So if you feel that your tests are getting harder and harder, be strong and know that Allah definitely loves you. Number 10. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا عَسَّلَهُ When Allah loves someone, He grants him a good deed that he dies while doing. Look at the last deed in someone's life, you will know whether Allah loves him or not. I had, I think, 30 examples in my last video, your last deed. I will leave a link to it in the description. That is the end of the signs. I hope you found one or two of them at least in you. Before I go, I have a very important message to everyone. I'm sure you heard that falling in love affects intellectual areas of the brain and triggers the same sensation of euphoria experienced by people when they are taking cocaine. That has been proved in a lot of medical research, and that's why you find teenagers who are in love seem high all the time. And when they break up, they suffer the same consequences an addict will suffer in rehabilitation facilities. What if we take a closer look at what these lovers are doing in their daily lives? 
He calls her several times per day, of course in addition to the one long call at night before they sleep. He sacrifices his money to buy her presents. Whenever she's not around, he talks about her with his family and friends. He hates when someone talks about her in a bad way. He goes under her house with flowers wishing to see her from her window. When he's alone, he reads his chat history with her. And he can't wait for the day that he will meet her. And this amazing dream usually ends either with a breakup or with marriage. It will end anyway and no more euphoria after that. Now let's look at the life of the close servants of Allah and try to understand why these people are literally the only happy people on earth. These people have the same euphoria, the same feeling of deep love that overpowers any hardship in life. But this euphoria does not end. There are no breakups and no marriage. The details of their daily lives are the same as any love story. He calls Allah several times per day using dua and prayers. That is in addition to the one very very long call at night, the night prayer. He sacrifices his own money to please Allah by doing charity and zakah. He talks about Allah with his family and friends. He hates if someone talks about Allah in a bad way. He goes all the way to Mecca trying to get closer on the straight path. When he is alone, he reads what Allah wrote for him, the Quran. And he can't wait for the day he will finally meet Allah. Allah said in Quran chapter 20 verse 123 قال اهبط منها جميعا بعضكم لبعض عدو فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن اتبع هدي فلا يضل ولا يشقى Allah said go to earth all of you you will be enemies to each other and I will send you revelations whoever follow my revelation will not go astray and will not suffer ومن أعرض عن ذكري فإن له معيشة ضنقة ونحشره يوم القيامة أعمى But whoever turns away from my revelation will live in depression and on the day of judgment will be resurrected blind قال رب لما حشرتني أعمى وقد كنت بصيرة He will say my lord why did you resurrect me blind while I was not قال كذلك أتتك آياتنا فنسيتها وكذلك اليوم تنسى Allah will say when you received my revelation you ignored them Today, you will be ignored. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Deliver my message, even if all you can deliver is one verse. Do not let this video stop with you. Share it with your friends and help it spread by engaging with it with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia Halo, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and Salaamu Alaikum.